I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out, righteousness. Today, I want to make the most passionate appeal that I possibly can to super television night show host, Trevor Noah. And I want to ask Trevor Noah if he would find it in the very kindness of his heart to invite me to be a guest on his show, as did John Stewart, the great John Stewart, when he was running or hosting the, uh, the, the Daily Show. And, and let me explain to you why it's, I'm making this appeal. And I'll explain to you why it's accepted or if it's not accepted, why I will greatly understand. But Trevor, our church has been in a foreclosure proceeding now for several years. And when the news struck back in 2016 that our church was in foreclosure, 2015, uh, for $1 million for water and toilet charges of a church that is fully and completely recognized as tax exempt by the federal government, by the state, and by the city of New York, yet the Department of Environmental Protection would not give us full exemption for our water and toilet charges and sold a lien for $36,000 to a Mellon Bank, and they have now run up an interest from $36,000 to $3.1 million. It was a million dollars several years ago because we've been continuing to fight, and now we're in bankruptcy court. But Trevor, I'm, I'm asking you, let me appear on your show so I can explain to the world what is going on with the courts and why they're doing this to me. It was explained to me by Jessica Williams, a very talented person, uh, very patient, very skilled interviewer, Jessica Williams, came and interviewed me several years ago. And in the process of the interview, she said to me, she said, Pastor Manning, you know, there is an LGBTQ group looking to buy this building once it's foreclosed because you don't have the money. And I didn't. And she said, you know what, Pastor, if they're going to turn this sanctuary into a wedding chapel for gay couples to get married in. And it's going to be an international place for gays to come from all over the world and get married in the same building where the so-called alleged a hate preacher, James Manning, used to preach. It was going to be a major move uh, and victory for the LGBTQ community. Uh, Jessica Williams explained that to me. Um, and, but she was a very skillful interviewer, and I, I, I treasure how she handled me. Uh, because had she not been so skilled, I probably would not have been able to answer the questions the appropriate way. But, but Trevor, I'm asking you to uh, don't let them don't let them take a thirty six thousand dollar water and toilet charge and with illegal interest and denial of due process by a whole slew of courts, the appellate division, the state courts and others to turn a thirty six thousand dollar lien. That was a million dollars when Jessica came to see me and John Stewart allowed me on his broadcast is now, because we're continuing to fight, and through the two years of pandemic, it's now going up to $3.1 million. And their plans now is to get their hands on this building and turn this building where I preach into a wedding chapel and a wedding resort for the LGBTQ community. I'm asking you to give me an opportunity to explain myself. Now, you know, Trevor, they call me a hate preacher, Trevor, because I preach the word of God. I'm a man of God. I preach the Bible. This is man shall not lie with mankind as with woman. That man shall not marry man. It's an abomination before almighty God. There are several statements, one in particular by Jesus in Matthew's gospel, chapter five, verse 17. There's a statement that Jesus said that the laws of Moses, I did not come to change one jot or one tittle of the laws of Moses. I come to uphold. I came to fulfill the laws of Moses because they're running around now and saying that, well, the laws of Moses regarding uh, man, not marrying man is no longer valid because Jesus has changed it. Jesus said, I didn't come to change it. I came to fulfill it. In other words, he said, I came to uphold it, the laws of Moses. And I, 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 I stand on that. Here I stand. I can do no other, Trevor, but they are persecuting me. And they have been persecuting me for years. 
Because under normal circumstances, a church with a $36,000 water and toilet charge would not be foreclosed. The city would forgive it. The lien holder would go the other way. The judges would throw it out of court. But they want to make an example out of me. Now, I understand that many people in your audience would, would frown and probably disavow you and, 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 and accuse you uh, of being against LGBTQ if you allowed me on your broadcast. But you know that is not the case. And what should be the case and what ought to happen in open-minded America, that both sides of a story ought to be told. You know, if Bruce Jenner's mother had been a lesbian, we wouldn't have a Bruce Jenner. So there needs to be somebody who is courageous enough, fiercely courageous like myself, to preach what the Bible preaches and what humanity has preached for years until of late, where they've been able to change the statutes and get that man marrying man, now a national, if you will, constitutional right. But if Bruce Jenner's mother, in other words, if Bruce Jenner's mother had been, a, had been a lesbian, we wouldn't have a Bruce Jenner. So I have a right to say what I'm asking you. Don't let, let me, let me come on your broadcast. I've never asked anyone to, to be on the, not once. I've been on Howard Stern. I've been on Sean Hannity. I've been on a, a series of broadcasts. I've been written up in the New York Times. I have never asked anyone. But I believe that in the spirit of John Stewart and the Daily Show, that you can take the heat because there will be heat. There will be people that will that will turn against you for allowing me to just come on the express. Listen, we're Trevor. The reason why this is so urgent now is that our church is in bankruptcy court. We're just about our building is just about ready to be sold. We have entered into Chapter 11 bankruptcy to stave it off, but the Mellon Bank is fighting it fiercely. Uh, I want to put up a, a statement, a status report that we've just filed uh, in the federal bankruptcy court before the Honorable Lisa G. Beckerman under Chapter 11 uh, Bankruptcy Code, uh, Subchapter 5. And the uh, if the engineer can just roll down to the background segment number two uh, and paragraph number three. Uh, let me just read this to you, Trevor. And this is a document on the penalty of perjury that's, being, uh, that's been presented to the federal court, so it's all accurate. Our lawyer writes, the case was filed to stop here in, in bankruptcy court a pending foreclosure sale of the church building. As noted in the litigation summary below, the claim, which is the basis for the foreclosure action, should not exist in the first place. And even if it's determined that some claims exist, the claim is hugely overstated because improper amounts were added to it. And the interest rate on which the claim is calculated is twice the allowable interest. What started out as $36,000 as $36, claim was noted as a lien of $2.1 million plus interest plus costs. And the notice of sale now is purported claim of over $3.1 million presently at this case. And I have to appear before the judge or hearing on this coming Thursday, the 28th of April. I don't know if you'll be able to make a move to help me get on your broadcast before then, but the matter will go on for a day or so as we stave off this this, this foreclosure. Listen, uh, Trevor, they've called me a hate preacher. I'm not. I'm just a fiercely courageous preacher. Trevor, I'm an ex-convict. I was convicted in the New York State Court here in Brooklyn of armed robbery. I was sentenced to 10 years. I was convicted in Florida uh, State Court in Dade County for a burglary that I didn't, uh, did not do. I was sentenced to three, to three years. I've been out of prison since 1978. I've been 44 years, and the only thing I've gotten was a speeding ticket. But in the 44 years, Trevor, well, they call me a hate preacher. I've learned my lesson. I have bitterly repented for the evil and awful, ungodly things that I did. I wish I could go back and tell that boy, don't do those crazy things that led you into prison. But I don't live like that anymore, Trevor, and I'm not a hate preacher. I preach God's word. I cannot preach Man, I cannot, I cannot go against Jesus. 
I know how they twisted it. I need your help. I'm asking you to help me. But Trevor, in the 44 years that I have been out, and of course, they have accused me of a large number of things. There have been accusations against our school. Trevor, we've had a school here for 27 years in Harlem, in the ghetto. You know, and sometimes in, in the ghetto would, you know, and you're running a school, you can get some teenage boys who can be outright thugs. I mean, carrying guns. You can get some teenage boys who don't want to go to school, don't want to learn, don't want to accept authority, yet they're in your school. They've made a whole lot of vicious accusations without one shred of proof because they thought that by making those accusations, they could shut me down, shame me. It didn't happen because there was no proof. But the accusations are out there. Anybody knows young black boys and 15, 16, 7 year old, not all of them, and just a few, can be outright thugs. And we've had to deal with that. But moreover, we have ran a school for 27 years, Trevor, without a metal detector. The children come to our school, First thing they can do is put down their book bag and grab a nice gourmet breakfast. No metal detectors. Trevor, this is not a word of a lie. We have never had one fight in 27 years. That's because I'm a strong leader. That's because I don't let thugs run the school. I'm a, not one fist fight. We've only had one girl in 27 years get pregnant as a teenager while attending the school. Not by someone in the school, but while attending the school. Trevor, the, 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 the years that I have led this community while well, they've called me a hate preacher, simply because I preach against homosexuality. And by the way, Trevor, if I come on your broadcast, I'm going to blast it. I, I'm, 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 still, I'm still Bible. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to turn my back on God's word. I'm not going to do that. Now, I need to let you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double down. That same sex marriage is wrong before God. But I'm appealing to you to, because there's more than one side to a story. And, I, and again, I say that I'm in defense. If Bruce Jenner's mother had been a lesbian, we wouldn't have a Bruce Jenner. I can go down the line on a whole lot of things we wouldn't have if people were lesbians and trannies and bi's and all of that kind of queers. We probably wouldn't have you. But I need you to know I'm a loving pastor. Now, I'm strong. And I don't take, I'm strong, uh, yeah, I've outspoken, yeah, I, I'm all of that, but I'm not what they have accused me, what these thugs have accused me of, and what these LGBTQ people, censorship people have done to me and to this church, and we should not, and what the judges have done to award $3 million to a bank in interest from a church, from a church to award for a judge, it's insanity, for a judge to award $3 million profit from a church or be shut down? It's unthinkable. But when that LGBTQ evil spirit rises, it does not care. Trevor, I'm going to show you a picture that they've posted up trying to make me look like a madman. Trying to make me look, you see me, look at me. Look how they've distorted my image. They've distorted who I am. Drop that, Mr. Engineer. We have taken our high school students. I started a thing called the Global Classroom. No other school in the city can do it. In a Global Classroom, we've taken our students to China twice. All expenses paid. We've taken them to London, we've, to Paris, to France, to England, to Rome, to Italy, to South Korea, to Ethiopia. As a traveling classroom, teachers and students all get on board a plane and we spend two, three weeks studying in, other, in Asia, in Europe, and in Africa. That's what this so-called hate preacher has done for the children of Harlem. Many of them would never have an opportunity to experience what we've experienced. Our students have been accepted at Yale, Juilliard. Trevor, Trevor, this so-called hate preacher has, in his school, the Otla High School, we have educated children that have been accepted at, at, at Yale, at Juilliard, at law schools, New York Law School, Cardoza Law School, Fordham University, New York University, medical school, doctorate programs, Pace University, St. John's, Fordham, where our schools, our, what I as a, as a pastor have led young children 
young people into such strong categories and community leaders. Just the other year, Trevor, we had uh, three of our students. Uh, their combined scholarship was more than a half a million dollars just coming out of high school. And one of the students was only, I think, 16 years old who received nearly $300,000 in scholarship. That's what this so-called hate preacher has been able to do. They've, they've lied on me, Trevor. They've lied and lied, and they've distorted the truth because I, I won't back down, and I'm not going to back down. And if getting on your show means I'm backing out, then I'm not coming on your show. But I thought that you would allow me the opportunity to express what the judges and what the LGBTQ people, they want to turn this church, at least Jessica Williams said that they wanted to hold weddings here. Imagine that, the place where I'm preaching now, laying hands, anointing on people, casting out devils and healing the sick and feeding the hungry. They want to use it for, wedding, for a wedding chapel once they take it from me. They want to use it for wedding chapels for the LGBTQ community. And I'm not asking you to, to, to say, you know, to denounce it. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm not, I, what I'm simply asking you is to let me, let, me, let me tell the world how these courts, how vicious, how insensitive these judges are and what they've done. Because we've pleaded with them over and over and over again not to do this to us. We're church, for crying out loud. We're not a business. We didn't borrow money from a bank and just refuse to pay it. We didn't take anything from anybody. Trevor, we have served over one million meals in the 40 years I've been here as a stable pastor living in the community. I wake up in Harlem every morning for the past 40 years and I serve breakfast to children and mothers every morning for 40 years, and we've served over one million meals, Trevor, and they call me a hate preacher, written me up in magazines and articles as a hate preacher. I need to defend myself. I need to defend this church and the great work we do. John Stewart was a man of great courage. He was. He's still out there trying to help and defend the underprivileged. Stewart is. He's a great man. I'm forever indebted to him for taking a chance. And you know, the people of his broadcast, they like me. <laughs> Jessica Williams did such a masterful job of interviewing me. She, she did such a great job that the people actually liked me. People thought maybe they were gonna hate me, but the way Jessica handled me, the people actually liked me. I became a little bit of a hero. <laughs> showed up, yeah, showed up. Now Trevor, I have to tell you, I do say some outspoken things. I, you know, I'm, you know I, I, I let it fly, but I'm, I'm asking you, I'm asking you to help me. Maybe you can send Jessica back. I don't know. I have no idea. But Trevor, I need your help and I need it right away. They want to turn this building into a wedding chapel for LGBT. I preached in this building. Babies were baptized. LGBTQ people were baptized in this building. AIDS patients were baptized. I preached funerals in this building. People have been married, man and woman, married in this. We have slept in here. We have prayed in here. Trevor, if you, I, I, I don't know anybody else to turn to. If you turn me down, I'll understand. But I'll say this to you. Your audience thinks that they don't like me because you know what they're doing up here in Harlem is a form of apartheid. They call it gentrification, Trevor. They call it gentrification. But it's truly apartheid. And I've stood against it. I've lifted up my voice. I've led marches against it. I have worked for years against the apartheid happening here in Harlem. And not just apartheid here, but everywhere. They call it gentrification. But it's white people moving into black people's neighborhood, kicking them to the curb, putting them in homeless shelters, and re renovating their properties, and then having their uh, if you will, sidewalk cafes, drinking their Chardonnay and eating their Caesar salad. It's apartheid! That's what it is. Thank you for listening to me, Trevor Noah. Good luck. Good luck in your endeavors, whatever might be your decision. I'm James David Manning, Trevor. I'm the Lord's servant.